Emergency podcast time, emergency season, and the emergency is that the Marlins have three All-Stars. Garrett Cooper has also been named to the All-Star roster for 2022. We are going to dig into that. All the reaction from the biggest Garrett Cooper stand there is the UK GOAT, Sean Barrett, joining me again on today's Locked on Marlins. You are Locked On Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from a very, very warm England. This is Locked on Marlins, and it's your Wednesday edition. I am your host, of course, Peter Pratt. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, guys, at Miami Marlins underscore UK. No TikToks, no Instas. Don't forget to subscribe to the pod. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yes, for those that are watching, hello, and uh, welcome to the show. It's an emergency pod. Uh, we're recording this on the evening in the UK, but this is going to be dropping on Wednesday UK time, maybe post-game uh, after the Tuesday game. So you'll be able to dig into Lockdown Marlins again, get all the reaction. And all the reaction, listen, there's been news dropping left, right and center. And the biggest news of the day, Sean Barrett is joining me. Sean, first of all, how are you doing? And show everyone what you're drinking. Uh, so it's only just early for me now, but yes... The bubbles had to come out. Um, as you said, I'm, I'm a massive fan of Gout Cooper, have been for years. I have bent your ear backwards many a times about Cooper over the years. And today is not a day I expected to see, you know, Gout no. Cooper, the All-Star game. I just didn't think he had that national cachet. Um, but here we are. And, uh, yeah, the celebrations might go long into the right in my household, that's for sure. Well, here's to Garrett Cooper from across the pond. Congrats. And richly deserved, I would say. We spoke about it on Monday's episode, mate. We were talking about it. Is there still a way Coop could make it? Is there still a way that John Birdie could make it? Lo and behold, Bryce Harper, well, he was never playing in the game. But next alternative there in the DH spot, third on the list for player voting, and then automatically in to replace Bryce Harper, Garrett Cooper. I mean, just first of all, how good has Cooper been this year? He's now an all-star, but just how good has he been? I mean, he's been fantastic, and I, I, I've said that many times on the pod already. You know, WRC+, Plus, which I use on your pod quite often, because it's quite a simple number. He's at 136, which means 100 is average. He's 36% better than the average player. You know, he's the 13th best National League bat in WRC+. Plus. What more is to be said? You know, that is an all-star player. Um, but yep. the, the problem Coop had was was that cachet, as I've said many times before. So yep. to see the players vote him in, to see them recognise and acknowledge not only the good year he's had, but the fact that he, he belongs to be in that in that all-star game, to me is fantastic. And we, it was only just yesterday that we spoke about the idea of, of Sandy and, 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 more importantly, Jazz for his first time being there and recognizing that you belong and you deserve mm. to be there. Coop's got that opportunity now. And, you know, I could not be happier for him. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's such a great point. Cause like you said, we spoke about it on, uh, on Monday's episode and, uh, you know, it was the fact that we said like Sandy really felt like he kicked on after he went to the all-star game. We're interested to see how it impacts jazz. For me, I think it'd be an even bigger shot in the arm for someone like Gary Cooper that is truly like we saw it with the fan voting. You know, he was like 15th in fan voting and, you know, he's putting up numbers. Everyone's quietly seeing what Coop's doing, but the fans don't know who Gary Cooper is like he's not marketed as a superstar, not like the attention that Jazz gets. So for Coop to rock up to the All-Star game, Deservedly so. It's not even like it's a wonky fan vote. That's the other thing. And it's not even like it's a pity one. Like, you know, think back to Sandy of 2019. Like, Sandy's turning up because the Marlins have to have someone. This isn't that situation either. Coop is legitimately an all-star. Yes, okay, it's because Bryce got hurt. People get hurt, but he was on the list, the players list. And Coop is in, and Coop deserves it. And I think this is going to be 
huge. There is the biggest coop stand that I know on a day-to-day -day basis. You are the biggest coop stand for sure. Our man, Craig Mish, equally, we have to call it out. Craig has always been on the Garrett Cooper train. He has always been there and he's always been saying, get the guy healthy, get him out of the outfield. You will see a different Garrett Cooper. And when we look back at it now, no appearances in the outfield for Garrett, for Garrett Cooper. He's been healthy all year long. Just how big has it been for him this year, shifting away from the outfield, concentrating on his hitting, and working at first base too. He's okay at first base, but I think the main thing is coming out of the outfield, just freeing that up and keeping himself healthy. Yeah, just so so big for him this year. Absolutely. I mean, he's a, he's a big dude. I mean, he's, he's, he's a is. chunky fella. Let's not move away from that fact. But if you look at the injuries that he's sustained over the years, you know, some of them have come from hit by pitches. You know, he's, he's missed multiple times from, you know, hitting balls hitting his hand. The, the, the injury that resulted in him having to have Tommy John last year was from a guy running through him at first base. So it has been that case of, it's not that he's, you know, injury injury prone in the in the common sense. He's just been super unlucky. Yeah. And if we go back to how good he's been this year, he's been this good the last two years. His, his WRC Plus is in the 130s. He is the identical player he's been the last two years. Just through injury, we've not been able to sort of see that over a, a, a longer period of time. So to say, you know, most fans go, oh, he's injury prone and we should strike while the iron's hot and trade him while he's having a good year. I mm. say no, because I would say he's been unlucky and we've just never really recognised or, or most fans haven't recognised just how good he is and how unlucky he's been as an individual. If he'd been healthy for three, those three seasons, he would have had put up three fantastic seasons. And I think... If he can continue to stay healthy this year, he's going to prove himself so valuable that they're going to have to lock him up. And the sooner they do that, the better. He's got one more year of arbitration. And if he continues to play like he's been playing, they're going to lose him in free agency. And some team like the Yankees, who where he came from, are going to want to swoop in and take him. So signing them up now, taking some of that risk because of the injury risk, taking some of that early risk and extending him now, they can get a bit of a deal, and you know, at the moment, as at the way he's playing, he he not only deserves that, the Marlins need that, no doubt. Cooper Loop, just for for those that haven't gone and checked out his contract situation, uh, he's being paid two point five million this year. The Marlins get an All Star DH at two point five mil. Um, final year of ARB next year, as as Sean mentioned. Um, Sean, with that being said, and I think I know what your answer will be. I know what your answer will be. Should the and the other thing to call out as well, Coop right now he's he's thirty one, um, will be thirty two heading into next year, will be kind of thirty three in his uh, first free agent year. Should the Marlins look to build around Cooper here now at this point? Should they look to maybe get what a two year deal with an option tacked on type of deal? Like is that kind of where their head should be at right now? Try and control you know as soon as someone's an all star, that plays into the arbitration conversation, right? So. Is this maybe the right time to try and have that conversation with Cooper? Say, listen, we believe in you, Coop. We want you to be part of this team. You've been part of it in the rebuild. Try and get some sort of deal done. You know, maybe similar-ish to like a, you know, the way the Solaire deal was maybe structured, but less options perhaps. Something in those lines, maybe two plus one is kind of my head, where my head would be at with Coop. What about you? Yeah, I mean, if you look at, if he were to go into free agency after the next year, he's probably going to be looking for one of those two three-year options. Yeah. Uh, deals. So signing him now, maybe you do go two with two options, and you do something like they did with Solaire, something in that twelve to to fifteen million range. Now, obviously, yeah. we're spending money that maybe the Marlins don't have, but <laughs> it is it is a case of he's the kind of bat. I mean, if if you looked at his numbers as a free agent signing, you'd be saying, "Great, this is this is the guy we want." So while having him in house and maybe getting that team friendly deal. Or by striking while you know striking early, getting a couple of million off those numbers. I don't see why you wouldn't do that. And if you're not going to build around him, or even not build around him, but have him be one of those core pieces of your lineup, what are we doing? You know, this this is a team that need to win now. This is the sandy window, as I I will continue to call it. While yeah. he is in the the early years of his contract, while he isn't earning much money, we're getting below value from Sandy 
you said before about the two and a half for Coop. He's going to be a, he's going to be probably a free war guy by the end of the year. All yep. said and done, that's twenty five million dollars worth of value, and they're getting him for a tenth of that. So you know, take that value and extend it into a few more years. You know, and you're still going to be paying below value if he continues. And I see no reason why he can't. This is now three years of stellar play with the injuries tacked in. But still, when he's on the field, he's a stellar player. He's he's over 30% better than the average player. That is a guy that you want on your team. I don't see why you would not. No, I'm completely with you, Sean. I mean, listen, Cooper Luby slid under the radar for years. Um, you go back and look at his, at his Marlins career. When he's on the field, he, you know, go and look at his baseball savant page as well. You go and check that out. All you see is red sliders galore, the expected batting average way up there, 88th percentile for that. Expected slug, 83, 83rd percentile. Um, X Wova, 86th. Exit velocity, 88th. Hard hit rate, 77th. Like, Cooper Loop's just a baller. He's a hitter. He hits for power. He hits it all over the field. Like, He's just a straight up hitter. He's and he's done that for years. You go and look at his historic numbers, it's the same profile. Hits the ball a lot, hits it hard, can hit for power, can hit to all fields. I mean, what a what a trade for the Marlins. <laughs> another acquisition that paid off, another trade. The fact they turned Garrett Cooper into an all-star. You know, you got to tip your cap to the Marlins, but I am very intrigued to see. And you got to tip your cap to, to Gary Cooper becoming a dad uh, for the first time, too. Goes on this um, all star campaign. He stays healthy. What a, what a year for Gary Cooper. And he richly deserves this. And for me, like you, I'm just delighted that he gets in on a fan vote, not a fan vote, sorry, a player vote. The players, the players recognize players. And they're looking around and going, of, and think of all the DHs, of all the hitters in the National League. Garrett Cooper, third on the list. Okay, Bryce Harper, perhaps in a different stratosphere, both contract-wise, historical-wise, and performance-wise to some, to some degree. But Cooper Loop, third on the list, richly deserved. Love it. Love, love that. Three All-Stars for the Marlins. On a different note, first ad of the day so let's get into the ads and it's our good good friends over at blue nile.com mentioned this many times guys and at blue nile.com you can celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece all the prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler so if you're ready to pop the question or celebrating a milestone moment find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at bluenile.com. So, how can they help you? If you're thinking about, if you're thinking about that engagement ring, if you're thinking about popping the question, Blue Nile, they've got a simple online tool that lets you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as setting style. Then Blue Nile's jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring. Each ring, yes, it is one of a kind. It's bespoke, baby, bespoke engagement rings for your bride to be. Sounds sensational to me. So make your moments sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and locked on listeners get 50 bucks off purchases of 500 bucks or more. This exclusive includes engagement. So reminder, use promo code locked on as locked on plus every order is insured. Of course, ships for free and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. All right then, Sean. So we have our all stars. I'm still intrigued to see what happens with Jazz Chisholm, by the way. Like, I'm still not is going to be playing, and I'm wondering what the next. I, I'm truly intrigued now. You know, wh where is the player vote on second base now? Where would that go? Cooks, like, all of a sudden, who knows? Anyway, I wanted to talk about some other news today that dropped. Um, not quite as exciting as the Garrett Cooper all star news. And again, cheers to Garrett Cooper. Uh, first time all star, and Sean is guzzling that champagne uh, <laughs> like it is going out of fashion. But another Marlins folk legend, Lewis Head, acquired in the offseason, was claimed on waivers by the Orioles today. And that caught me off guard because Lewis Head, 
He's on the IL. Why is he on waivers? But nevertheless, he is on waivers. And the Orioles have claimed him. And that's the end of Lewis Head. The head is gone. Finished. He's gone. All the jokes, they're gone. All those tweets, they're gone. Lewis Head, gone. Uh, Sean, thoughts on this one? Yeah, the uh, Lewis Head Marlins era has come to an end, uh, as it is. You know, yeah. a guy with an over 70 RA, um, just coming back from injury on a rehab assignment, you know, fully expecting him to to get some, some innings down there and then see what happens later on in the year. But obviously, the team felt it was time for a change and, and a move, you know, the 40 man roster, you know, he's ultimately been picked up by the Orioles, as you said, and, and it will continue. Poor old Lewis Head. I mean, if you look what the Rays did to him last year, up, down, up, down, up, down. I mean, they yeah. created, a, they created a new rule to stop things happening. What <laughs> they Lewis did. It was the head rule. Head. I think my wife's implemented a similar one, but nevertheless, that's a different topic. But you're right. They did because the up and down, he was literally up and down about 15 times in the season. And it's effectively the Lewis head rule has, has been brought in to stop that. The Marlins did it, I think, a little bit too with Nick Nider and Castano. But, you know, you're right on that. The interesting bit, though, Sean, is the fact that, you know, when you see uh, the Orioles are annou- uh, have announced this and what it's announced is we've, we've claimed him on waivers. OK, um, didn't know he was on there, but OK, fine. And we've optioned him to AAA. He, he had minor league options. It wasn't like the Marlins were handcuffed into like, well, if they want to send him down, he's got to be DFA'd. They could have done it. He's on the IL. He's about to make a rehab assignment um, appearance. It felt a bit puzzling, but I guess, you know, fundamentally, and spots too. Um, exactly. It's a 40-man go on, you, a 40 it's man a 40 man move, right? A yeah. So, so Baltimore now have to, to make a corresponding move. Someone's got to be removed from their 40-man roster. So clearly yeah. that was the, 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 the thought for the Marlins, is that they want an extra spot for, and... Um, I think Devin Marrero is 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 has been coming up. I think I, that's. I think I saw that somewhere, but I don't want to confirm that. I don't want to break any news. That's for sure. Oh boy, oh boy. So, so Marrero, I haven't seen the Marrero. Um, uh, I guess corresponding piece to that, but it, it, yeah. it could totally have just be a joke. To be fair, so <laughs> <laughs> probably was because it got me thinking. I was thinking, okay, cool. They're making this move that they don't have to make at this moment in time. They need to open up a 40-man spot. There's a few ways they could go about that. But Lewis Head, clearly, you know, he maybe he's not in their thoughts for the future. I don't know. Um, you make the move. There's a couple of guys sitting there at AAA that if you want them to play, they need to be added to the 40-man. One of them is Max Meyer. The other is JJ for the day. Both of them. Um, you know, we'll wait and see. But for me, like, that was where my head went straight to. It was like, okay, they've given up on Head. He's he's been waived when wasn't basically wasn't essential that he was waived. And uh, now the Marlins are sitting there with, with an open spot. What they're going to do? I'm thinking this is Max Mason. Here's the other thing, mate. Here's the other connection I'm trying to think about now. Is Avi Garcia is sat? He's sitting today. Uh, and maybe you're listening to this post game, which you probably will be. So he sat today. Um, he sat on Sunday. So that's two starts out of three Abby hasn't started in. Is he perhaps hurt? Perhaps. Maybe. Maybe there's something there lingering. and Maybe there's a, an IL stint coming. Maybe they're thinking, yeah, maybe we want some blood A, blood a time. Maybe. I'm just kind of piecing it together to think like two out of three days with Abby Garcia not in the lineup at all. Okay, he doesn't deserve to be. That's the second. That's in there through thick and thin. And... Maybe that's where they're going with this, where they actually need to clear a spot for Blade. I know we're thinking about Maya, but maybe. I mean, if it was Avi Garcia to go down, let's say they put him on the 10 day IL, Soler isn't quite ready to come back. What's your thoughts? Blade up? It'd be fantastic to see him. And, yeah. and you know, it is, it is a case of, you know, we need to start seeing some of these guys. We've talked about Lewin, we've talked about Max. Um, to a lesser degree, we've talk, not talked so much about Blade. He's had still continued struggles, and we were talking Heyra a few weeks ago and saying, yeah. you know, maybe he deserves a shot. Um, but you know, but Blade is one of those guys where it is a case of as he as he is getting older, and you know, it is starting to get to the point where we do need to see him. And if Avi is injured, or if if 
if they want to hide him on the IL back in the day, you would, you know, you would replace the DL as it was named them into a disgraceful list, and you would hide some poorly playing guys down in the, in the IL. So um, yeah. maybe maybe that is not the direction the Marlins want to make. He, he would deserve it, that's for sure. But no, yeah. there are guys out at, down in AAA that aren't on the forty man that deserve their shot. And and as we are getting into the crunch time of the season, now is a time where you make decisions that you know are, you make these financial decisions where you say we're going to need to spend some money by bringing these guys up, starting their clocks, making trades because the Marlins are in it. You know, as as yeah. dismissive as we've been over the last few weeks. And, you know, there's been a few rants here and there about players. <laughs> Ultimately, the team are, are in it. And, yeah. and now is now is the time to make these moves to improve the, the 26-man roster and really make a run for it. Yeah, no doubt. Um, just on Blade, just to finish up there, for those that haven't looked um, for some time, you know, 2022 uh, stats this year, he's hit 17 home runs. 17 home runs. He's only hitting 218, but there's an OPS of 7 98 so not so much hitting for average maybe that we originally expected him to be maybe more of a contact hitter maybe he's kind of turned his game more into a power hitter right now and you know he's hitting the you know around about 800 ops um you know can play a decent outfield like listen if avi garcia goes down celeste still not back around you know like you i mean we were all clamoring for for hit aaron canacion he hit a salami in his debut i mean surely the guy deserves another shot he's next man up but Maybe the Marlins themselves are thinking, yeah, we want a bit more agility in the field. I mean, Heyrao looked fine in the field too, to be fair. So, yeah, I'm not really clear on the development approach to Heyrao. I'm not really clear on the development approach to this either. Um, Blade isn't on the 40-man yet. They haven't had to make that call. But we'll wait and see. Um, we'll wait and see how that one plays out. My head immediately, when head was was you know removed from the 40-man effectively, was, well, who are they clearing a spot for? They must be clearing a spot for someone. They have to be. There's no reason why they need to make that move unless they need to clear a spot. It has to be, in my opinion, Maya, Blade, or perhaps one or two others uh, are tripling. Okay, so one final ad, then we'll wrap up this emergency pod. And it's our good friends over at Bet Online at betonline.net. It's your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. You've got to find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball, of course. And it's your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And betonline.net, it remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. It's a big claim. This is an easiest way to check in all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Uh, the Open's going this week, by the way, on the golf. So get those bets down. Tiger Woods in the UK. Looking forward to that. So head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. Sean, where the game hasn't started, well, it did start yesterday. Uh, this is Monday. In diabolical fashion, I would describe it as for the fish. Boy, oh boy, it was not a it was not an optimal start for the fish. Trevor Rogers, too. Um, again, Trevor, he just can't find a way to have a clean game, it seems. Like there's always at least one inning of doom. Um, the first inning was not great for sure and it was compounded by his own fielding error like i know i think the error is actually on aguilar on that one but it wasn't aguilar's fault at all it was trevor rogers's fault for some reason he ran to first base like he should but he forgot to look where the ball was coming from i think he thought he just he had the ball already i don't know what he was thinking you play the game sean i don't what was trevor thinking there <laughs> yeah you you honor me by saying i play the game i mean <laughs> Incredibly low level. I think, to be honest, he was probably, you know, the, it's, it's tough because I have no idea what he was thinking. But <laughs> the only explanation I can think of is that he was expecting to need to get to the first base, then turn and take the, the returning ball from second place, second base for the double play. As it was, there was never enough time. But it was weird because he ran just straight, you know, yeah. focused at first base. No looking elsewhere. I mean, you know where first base is. You don't need to. You don't need to be looking for it. Look at the play. You know, it's so important to look at the play and see what happens. Aggie yeah. sort of double pumped it, didn't he? He wanted to throw it once. Realized he's not even. But he realized he wasn't looking. He did. And then just 
gave it a, a light toss up in the air, hoping that maybe by the time the ball gets there, he'll have turned around, and, and yeah. he hadn't. And, yeah. you know, it, I think that was... I mean, I managed nearly seven innings last night into the early hours, but I think realistically, after the Newman single to start the game, finding a gap, you know, a C9 single, and then that error, you know, two runs in the first inning... I really should have just turned the telly off there and caught it <laughs> in the morning. But I stuck with it. I, I was hopeful. But no, that, that really was the end of the game. Now, now to be fair to Rogers, you know, he started to settle down. He had a couple of quick, easy innings. And I think after the fourth, I was like thinking, he's still got, you know, the pitch count's not crazy. He's still got a chance of going six. But the fifth, there was, there was a couple of bats where he just wasn't missing bats. And you know, there were fouls here, there, and everywhere, and the pitch count came up, and then and that, that was the end of the game for him. Um, but there were some, there were some signs there that were good. You know, we got a couple of K. You got at least one K on that slider that I, I looked at and thought that looked like a good pitch. Um, but I think it came at the end of like a ten pitch at bat, so the damage had almost already already been done. But yeah, I mean, again, another game. Rogers continues after a full half season. Having only one game at six innings, you know the ERA is is it, it ballooned to a point that I hadn't really recognised. It was only sort of uh, during the game I realised, oh wait, no, that ERA is pretty horrific. Um, you know, we've now had a full season, last year's second half and this year's first half. We've had a full season of poor play um, from Rogers, and I think it was you on one of your recaps that said he's been skating, and he really has skated. Um, I think it is at a point where now we've got to sort of question, is, is he justified as a rotational piece? We've got to be close to that that conversation. Like, we really have to. It's like a six ERA. And listen, I'm not a scout, as it's shown today on Twitter, because I was pumping up Lewis Head saying he could be the, the saves leader for the fish this year. So that's blown that one out of the water. But when I watch the games, and I think we all do, what we recognize and see with Trevor Rogers in the main is just he's not missing bats to that point that you made there, like, you know, 11, 12 pitch at bats, like, okay, fine. He puts him away on, on a slider, but it just doesn't look like it's just not enough movement. There's just not enough bite to his, like his game anymore. It's something has fundamentally changed. I remember watching Trevor in, in 2020, and, you know, his first couple of starts, it was a bit patchy, but I could see it. I could see it when I was watching. I was like, wow, this guy's going to be great. I can feel it. Like, there's just a bite there. He's just learning. The bite's gone. Like, it really has. It just feels a bit kind of, bit flat, bit kind of Eliezer. Like, like we were, lay, you know, lamenting Eliezer early in the year, just saying it's kind of meatball season. The, the fastball stays just flat. It's not quite as bad as that, but... It just doesn't have the bite that it once did in, in 21, which is really concerning. Six ERA, no starts, what, above six innings? Maybe maybe there's one all year or none? Zero. Six is the max. Those six is max. Day. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm really, you know, where do the Marlins go with this one? I really don't know. But right now, if Trevor's starting, I, I'm expecting us to lose the game, to be honest with you. Like, you know, it's a six ERA starter. The offense is not a six run offense that regularly so it's a bad connection final couple of points mate we'll let uh, we'll get out of here on the 30 minute mark it will take uh, as emergency pod um zach pop by the way just speaking about guys who have been good we've talked about bass a lot um zach pop uh, his numbers are absolutely popping as well like he is having a great year zach pop under the radar um just on the flip side Jacobonis. Has come back down to earth now, mate. It's meatball season. That was a full blown meatball from Jacobonis. It did move, but it moved center center and it absolutely got destroyed by Marisnik. But I don't want to dwell on Jacobonis. Zach Pop, mate, really sneaky numbers, really doing well. Like all of a sudden, there's a nice picture there, I think, emerging. What about you? And I think that's important. We spoke um, earlier on Monday about the idea that once you go through. Scott and O'Kerr and Bass, you've got three guys that you, you trust reasonably well in, in the back end. There's not much more. The the middle to long is pretty weak at the moment. So if Pop can step up, I mean, mm. limited game so far, just the 12 innings. But, you know, it, 
yesterday was an impressive appearance and it is key for the miners to have that you know the, the the deeper your bullpen is the better obviously and it's not just a case of having guys that you trust you know you want seven eight and nine and you hope you get six at your pitchers um we just spoke about rogers so you know you're not getting that but no. it is that case of those those three innings you can't have just three guys to fill those roles you need a fourth and a fifth and a sixth guy because they're not going to be pitching every day. So if Pop can step up as as a, a key guy who can throw a, a six or a seven, occasionally an eighth in in close games, you know games that we're trying to win, that yep. will be key for the Marlins. Absolutely, no doubt. Zach Pop for me, he's adopted the James Hoyt role, like that that Hoyt season in twenty twenty. The fireman, whatever nickname we ended up with, but Hoyt used to come in in those tough spots and just get big outs. Like you wouldn't be given a leverage spot, like a you know, because the way Donnie managed the pen, you know, it was seventh, eighth, ninth. We knew who the guys were. Obviously, only sixty game seasons, so he could do that a little bit easier then. But for me, that's the role that Pop is kind of filling into right now. Is that kind of like, oh, something's on fire in the sixth inning? pop season and don't forget he came in against the Mets I think with the bases juiced at one point and managed to get out of it as well uh, might have been the Pablo start if I recall correctly over the weekend so pop's being given leverage but with runners on base and he's not scared to get in there and do his thing so great to see uh Yacobonis is hanging by a thread in my opinion um there's a decent chance after a real like encouraging start and you know everyone waxing lyrical about him I think Yacobonis is on the cusp of being optioned uh, right now, or if, if he doesn't have option, then DFA perhaps. Then, like it is just, it's turned sour for him in quite a quick space. Maybe short, small sample size. I don't know, but nevertheless, Sean, we can't finish on a negative. Garrett Cooper is an All Star. Jazz Chisholm and Sandy Alcantara also All Stars. The Marlins have three All Stars. The first time they've had more than one since 2017 i believe there was i think there was four uh, in 2016. four in 20 wow i mean that was that was a big year they must have had or oh, jose fernandez would have been there um, yeah Stan, i guess Ozu, uh, Stanton was he ozuna maybe or was the, think, ozuna the year after but. i think it was two pitches after that but it was definitely oh i know it was it was um rodney was in the mix that year um <laughs> which is which is obscene given just, given the the story of, of Fernando Rodney in the Marlins jersey. I'm pretty sure as well that it, the other one could have been AJ Ramos. It the would. Way. You're right. Yeah, it um, was. Just as a random shout. So listen, this, this crop is better than that crop. Let's just call it out right now. I mean, Jose Fernandez aside, but like that, this this crop is better than that one. But the Marlins have three All Stars, and it would not shock me if they end up with another one. Like it still wouldn't shock me if someone else sneaks in there, Pablito or um, or John Birdie, uh, or even Bass. Like it really wouldn't. So we'll wait and see. Uh, how that, this one goes but um that's us done emergency pod season we record this on tuesday pre-game but this is going to come out post game and be your wednesday episode so i hope you enjoy this wednesday's episode of locked on marlins and it was delightful to share a celebratory champagne with sean barrett celebrating garrett cooper being being a first time all-star in 2022 a pivotal moment in his career i'm i'm absolutely delighted for the guy i'm excited for the guy in terms of what comes next and I'm excited to see what the Marlins do, not just um, with Gary Cooper, but I'm excited to see what they can do in the rest of this Pirate series. Hopefully they can turn it around and get themselves on a winning streak they badly, badly need. Hopefully when you're listening to this, they have just won the game with Dan Castano going deep again. That would be sensational. You will see me on the recap tomorrow going bananas. In the meantime, guys, that's Locked On Marlins. Thank you for making Locked On Marlins listen truly your first listen of the day. Uh, if you're thinking about your second listen of the day, Head over to MLB, uh, Locked on MLB Prospects. Lindsey Crosby's hosting that one free wherever you get your pods. We'll be back on Thursday. We're Locked on Marlins. Until then, guys, go fish. And well done, Gary Cooper.